Okay, so Matthew chapter 3, and we will be bouncing back and forth between Matthew chapter 3 and Luke chapter 3. Yes. Do we need the microphone? We're supposed to do this. Uh, Sue. No difficult questions, please. Weren't, weren't they supposed to wear certain specific types of clothes that were laid out in the law? Or did they go away from that? They, they were wearing the clothes that were laid out for them. As uh, Moses said in the law, the problem was, was Aaron and his sons were serving God while doing it. In the day of John the Baptist, the priests were serving themselves while wearing them, while wearing those clothes. God was not in there at all. Okay, outside, let me, change, let me rephrase this, outside of your few individual ones, like your Zacchaeus, um, Zacchaeus, Zacharias, well, Zacchaeus turned out okay. <laughs> I mean, come on, give the guy a break. I mean, I like Zacchaeus. I mean, anybody that climbs up in a tree, I'm all for it. I mean, tomorrow morning, I'll be up in a tree, 25 feet a tree with a gun. I mean, a bow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, so what happens is, um, yeah, you have your individuals, you know, whether it be a Nicodemus or, or um, Joseph of Arimathea. There were, there were those Pharisees. There were those different individuals that were really seeking after God. And isn't that what the curse, or I mean, the verse, the verse about the curse in Malachi 4 is about? If you were truly seeking after God, you, you were going to see the salvation of God. But if you weren't seeking after God and you were just seeking after yourself, and the, or religion, then you very simply could not see the salvation of God when it's standing right in front of you. And isn't that what happened to Christ? Christ was standing right in front of them, and they didn't recognize him. They couldn't see him. Because they were too, um, too blinded by themselves, literally, by the system. Okay? So, yeah, they were wearing those, and, that's, and, and again, that's sort of why when you have Zechariah prophesying, oh, that's not out of the ordinary in one sense. Yes, it was 400 silent years, but it's not out of the ordinary because Zacharias was a priest. But all of a sudden, Zechariah's son, he, believe it or not, John the Baptist would have been a priest. He was, he was born into the priesthood, and he was a priest to God. But I don't need the clothes. I don't need the raiment. And by the way, again, back to being in the wilderness, I think John the Baptist knew the scriptures more than the Pharisees and Sadducees did of that day. Because of traveling with those men in the wilderness, you know, he got a chance to open the scriptures, see the scriptures, read them for himself, and go to the very places where it took place. These other ones never left Jerusalem. They weren't among the people. John the Baptist was. He was among, the, and isn't that what Christ was? He was among the people. And so you have here, uh, look at Matthew chapter 1, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 3. We have verses 1 through 12 give us a pretty accurate thing about what he was, John was preaching about here. Uh, his main, main thing here was, uh, number one, repent each one of you. Okay? Um, preaching in the wilderness saying, repent you. And ye 
And it literally means you, each one of you, individually repent. And then the second part of his message is the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Or the kingdom of heaven is near unto you. At hand literally means it is near enough for you to touch it. Okay? At hand. It's very near to you. And he knew this because he knew he was the forerunner of the Messiah. Okay? So in his preaching here, he knew this. And he was known or, reg or called the voice of God. And we already mentioned that, the loud, booming voice um, actually, now, I just wanted to bring out those two points. This was the key parts of his message. Re Repent each one of you, and the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, Ma Luke chapter 3, as I said, we're going to bounce back and forth here a little bit. We have verses 7 through 15. Here is another part of his message. When he is speaking to the multitudes of people, it's repent each one of you. The, uh, part two, to the multitude. The kingdom of God is at hand. Part three. Part three here now is, and he said unto the multitude, multitude, multitude. Ooh. Well, there were so many of them, you know, it sort of looked like a tide going in and out, okay? Um, he said unto the multitude, verse 7, come forth to be baptized of him. Okay, so now, the, now it's decision time. Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand, and if you believe so, uh, there's nowhere where we find this baptism like this in the Old Testament. He's making them make a decision as a, a, a form of ceremonial washing or cleansing. What did they have to do when they came into the temple? You have the laver. You have the washing and the cleansing taking place. Okay? It's the same way. Come forth and this, the Jordan River, this dirty Jordan River is my laver. Come, come in here and get washed and cleansed. Okay? But look what he says here. Number four of his message. O generation of vipers. Okay? Now, it was the multitude he's talking to, and he is invited to come and be baptized. Now, those who don't want to come and be baptized, and he's talking specifically here to the religious leaders. Those who want to repent, those who believe the kingdom of God is at hand, and those who want to be baptized, guess what? The blessing of Malachi 4 is before you. Those of you who refuse to listen to me, you don't want to repent, you don't believe the kingdom of God is at hand, you don't want to be baptized, you are the religious ones. The curse is upon you. O oh, gener uh, generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth... Therefore, uh, fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to, as our father. <laughs> what, what did Jesus say? To, what did they say to Jesus? Abraham is our father. Who is your father? Okay? For I say unto you, and this is, I say unto you, God is able, to, uh, God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Okay, um, then he begins to get into some specific problems of the generations, uh, the specific problems in that generation of Israel. And, he, and now also, the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him, saying, what shall we do then? He answered and said to them, He that has two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that, ha that, is, that hath meat, let him do the same likewise to him that does not have meat or does not have food. What's he doing? 
He's, put it, he's teaching something that has not been heard in Israel. For, is, for years, Israel has been under oppression of everybody, and all, you get what you get and you keep it. It's yours. Because you never know when another empire is going to come in and attack and you'll have nothing. Give and you shall what? <coughs> Receive. And this is what he's, he's saying here. Don't hoard it for yourselves. Don't store up for yourselves. Don't worry about tomorrow. Give the things away. Think about others. You know, this is, this is a new mentality he is bringing in for them. Obviously, he's not talking about salvation here. Okay? This doesn't save anybody. But what he's talking about is a mindset that has been forced upon Israel by these uh, Gentile empires for 400 years. Okay? And then verse 12. Then came the publicans to be baptized. You know, the publicans, the tax collectors, okay? And he said to him, Master, what shall we do? Because what has he been saying? Repent of your sin, right? Well, I don't... I, what sin? You know, it's like, I don't, I don't know, what, is there something I'm doing wrong? So what, you know, these are, the, these are the honest questions they had. Because, you know why? What they were doing was accepted in that day. It was no problem. You know, it's like today, it's like you talk to somebody on the street, it's like, hey, you know, you got to confess your sin and just, you know, recognize, what sin? As they're walking out of the liquor store. But everybody socially drinks in our culture. It's okay. Not according to the Bible. If you don't point it out, people don't recognize it as being wrong. What do you mean cohabitation is wrong? What are you talking about? You Same-sex marriage. It's, it's legal in some states. Yeah, repent of your sin. Exactly. You know, so what happens is he, he says, listen, you want to know? I'm going to start pinpointing things. And so they said, uh, and he said unto them, exact no more or take no more than what is appointed unto you. Tax collectors, they would always take extra for themselves, charge extra. And there was nothing nobody could do about it. They would always take more. Okay? And then the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, what shall we do? And he said unto them, do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. You know, uh, when we were living in Ghana, you know, as a, we would get pulled over by the police, you know, and, and everybody, would, you know, Uganda, it's all over the world. I, mean, I know it's all over the world. I've seen it all over the world. You get pulled over by the police, you know, it's like, oh, quick, here, you know. And you walk up, oh, hi, and you shake the officer's hand, you know, slip him, you know, whatever it is, you know, the, a low denomination of the currency, you know. And, you know, it's like, what? I'm just buying him lunch. You know, it's all, hey, can I buy you some lunch? We got to go. Okay, see ya. You know, and it's like, uh, what was, it's a form, it's a common practice and custom. It's still illegal. It's still wrong. Okay? Um, extortion is wrong. It doesn't matter on what level it is. Okay, and this is all John is doing. John is pointing out, you want to know what the sin is? Isn't that what Ezra did? Ezra and Nehemiah both. Oh, what, you want to know what the sin is? You are marrying Canaanite women. Oh. Oh, we're not supposed to do that? Oh. I never knew. Liar. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, so all John's doing is pointing out things that are wrong, okay? Charging high interest rates? Jeez, that's wrong, according to the Bible. But, of course, not according to our customs and cultures. Okay, anyway, sorry, sorry about that. A little, start a little rant there for a minute. <laughs> okay, so, you know, he, um, why did Elijah dress and act the way he did? He literally wanted to fit into the role of Elijah, in one sense, okay? Elijah was known as the wild man, 
right? Isn't that what the kings called him? The wild man. So, <laughs> John the Baptist is like, well, I'm supposed to be Elijah. <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't have to worry. I mean, he literally was a wild man. Now, when it says he ate wild locusts, how many have ever eaten locusts or grasshoppers? Oh, they're good. Oh, you've got to try them. Oh, you've got to try them. Yeah, high in protein. They're, it's very good. You know, um, what's, what's the other one? The white ants, the termites. Sautéed termites? No? no? Oh, them are good. You guys have got to get into the third world countries. They are some good stuff. I'll tell you what, he ate good. That's all I know. <laughs> we took the teenagers to Thailand one time, and, and they were, uh, we were way up in the village in the north of Thailand, and this woman was um, spinning silk from silkworms. And I was like, okay, I got, you know, I got, uh, I think it was like 10 or 12 of us. I got them together. I said, okay, walk us through the process, the whole process from the worm to the silk. Show us everything. How do you do this? And so she showed us how they boil them. They get the thread out. They, you know, uh, and the, the loom, how they work everything. I almost said womb. In the loom, okay, and they work everything out, okay. And, and then I, I got to the point, I was like, okay, that's the silk, that's the cloth. Said, well, what do you do with the worm? She smiled. <laughs> she, and she, she took a, uh, a scoop of the worms off, out of the boiling water right over to the fire and put them in a frying pan and sauteed them up. And she said, here they are. I was like, excellent, everybody. <laughs> and the kids are like, oh, no, I can't. I said, you, you have a little thing of silk that you made for every one of us, right? And they're like, yeah, only if you eat a worm. <laughs> Yeah, to me, they were great. A couple of the kids liked them. A couple of them had a hard time, but they got their little soak patch. <laughs> Wild locusts and honey. Okay. Now, uh, John the Baptist. John the Baptist. His baptism. Okay. His baptism. It was in. It was in view of the coming Messiah. His baptism was not for personal salvation. <clears throat> His baptism was a petition, more or less. You know, like a, you know how a petition goes around? If you want something changed, and they start a petition, and you're for the change, you sign it. You're for it. You're backing it. You want to see it happen. This is sort of like John the Baptist. Hey, there's the coming of the Messiah is at hand. The coming of the Lord is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. If you are for this... Come and get baptized. Be on board with us. Show God that there is a group of people that want to see God come. You know, it's sort of like a petition type thing. And so the people were coming to support the fact that they wanted the Messiah to come. They wanted to see God do something. It was in view, so we have in view of the coming Messiah, his baptism was in view of the people recognizing the uncleanness of themselves and the nation. The baptism was in view. They recognized the uncleanness in themselves and in the nation. This is all from, these four points that I'll give you are all from Mark chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Number three, John's baptism was based upon confession and repentance. Confession and repentance. Confession. An agreement an acknowledgement and repentance, a change of mind. So what did he say? Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Okay? And now, if you agree with this, if there's something you need to repent of and you want to be a part of the kingdom of God moving in your life, come down and be baptized. So it's, a, it's an admittance and a repentance 
from this personal and national sin. And John's baptism, point number four, was with a view to receive forgiveness. The baptism did not forgive them, but they knew that it was the step in receiving forgiveness. Now we know what's the only thing that can forgive us of sins? The blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? The blood of Jesus Christ. But in order for Jesus Christ to come so he could shed his blood, the nation had to recognize a need for a Savior, both personally and nationally. John was also known as the witness. Actually, turn to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Uh, what's John's name mean? Oh, oh. Yahweh is gracious. Yahweh is gracious. Verse 7. The same man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He, John, was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Okay, so this was John. Uh, John here was a witness of the light. Actually, look at also verse 15. John bore witness of him, cried, saying, This is he of whom I spoke. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now, Naturally speaking, we know Jesus was both conceived and born after John. But John's witness is, he is before me. He is eternal. Okay, He is the Son of God. He is the Messiah, the eternal one. All right. Um, and then, is it? Verse 19, for this is the record or the witness of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? And he confessed and, de uh, he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him and said, what, what then? Art thou Elijah? And he said, I am not. Now look what it says. Art thou that prophet? You see, this is the priest asking this. Art thou that prophet? Remember Zechariah's prophecy. Zechariah's prophecy about the prophet. Now who is the prophet or that prophet they are referring to? Remember in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. I'll actually read it to you. Because I remember it, but I don't exactly know how it goes. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, 
of thy brethren like unto me, and unto him you shall hearken. Now, who was that prophet that was like unto Moses that they were referring to? Moses was referring to. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the prophet, and even the priest knew that the Messiah would be the prophet. Okay? Zechariah recognized that his son would be the forerunner of the prophet. So they asked him, Art thou that or the prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said unto him, Who art thou? that we may give an answer to them that sent us. Why sayest, what sayest thou of thyself? And he said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said of the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why then baptize thou? And he, if thou be not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor that prophet. And John answered and said, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom you know not. Now, it's some people believe that at that very time, Jesus was standing right there. Jesus was standing right in the midst of the Pharisees right then and the priests right then, and they didn't know it. There is, but there is one standing among you whom you know not. He it, it is who comes after me is preferred before me, whose shoelace I am not worthy to unloosen. These things were done in Bethadera, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Now look at this. The next day, the very next day, John seeth Jesus coming. And many people believe, most scholars believe, that Jesus was standing right there that day in front of the priest. They recognized him not. And when they left to go back to Jerusalem, that's when Jesus came forward to be baptized. Wow. He didn't do it in front of them. Because look what happens. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me. For he was before me, and I knew him not. But that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I am come baptizing with water. And John bore record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove. Now, here is the thing. Here it says the next day, but John is in verse 32, is already giving a testimony that Jesus had been baptized. He had already been baptized. Okay? So there is a play here. When was it? Was Jesus baptized one day? The priest showed up the next day, and then the very next day, Jesus showed himself again? Or was it Jesus was baptized the same day the priests were there? They witnessed the Holy Spirit coming down upon him. They heard the voice from heaven, and they still did not recognize. See, there's a whole, we're, we're not sure. I mean, the way the Pharisees were and the priests were of that day, it would be very believable that Jesus was baptized while they were there. And the only thing they were concerned about was asking John if he was the Christ. And the Christ was being baptized right before them. They saw, they heard, and they still did not believe. And the very next day, Jesus comes. And John says, he's the one. Not even the priests could recognize it. And, and so we have here exactly what happens is um, um, the, uh, the heavens open up and all, all four Gospels account to this. Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Mark chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. Luke chapter 3, verses 21 and 22. 
and hear John 1, 31 and 32. Matthew 3, 16 and 17. Mark 1, 10 and 11. Luke 3, 21 and 22. John 1, 31 and 32. What happened? The heavens opened, and some people believe that the heavens opened, you can look directly into and see, get a glimpse of heaven. Okay, it's not just the clouds parted, but you look beyond, it was, there was something that, to behold. Okay, uh, the Holy Spirit descended. Now, it doesn't say he descended as a dove. Okay, it said the Holy Spirit descended like a dove. Okay, it, it, and like a dove means it was a, a peaceful, but it was more like a simple gliding. It was just a, just a simple resting, basically. The Holy Spirit came down re very peaceful and restful and covered and, and entered into him. And then the voice. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Did everyone hear this voice? We don't know. Did everyone see what into heaven? We don't know. Did everyone see the Holy Spirit descending? We don't know. But we know Jesus did. We know John did. We know some of his disciples did. And those who believed did. It's, it would be much like Acts chapter 9 when Paul right, was riding on his horse he saw a bright light. He heard a voice. What did the others see? <clears throat> Lightning and thunder. Right? They heard a loud noise. They heard a loud, they saw a bright light flash, but they didn't see the specifics. Okay? So we don't exactly know. The Pharisees are like, oh yeah, sun shining. Oh, did you feel the nice, cool, gentle breeze? Oh, that's funny. There was thunder. <laughs> Sun shining and thunder. Anyway, by the way, John, who are you again? <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's pretty much like they were oblivious to what was going on while John gave this testimony. Okay, or while John witnessed this testimony. Okay, so um, Jesus Christ comes. Uh, actually, is it Matthew? Jesus Christ comes to be baptized. Uh, Yes, Ver, uh, three Matthew three thirteen. This is when, this is the only account of this. Then came forth Jesus from Galilee to Jordan, unto John to be baptized of him. John forbid him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. Come and yet you come to me. Verse fifteen of Matthew three. Jesus answering and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it cometh, becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then John suffered Jesus to be baptized. And when Jesus was baptized, uh, he went straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And John saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting or coming upon him. And the voice from heaven saying, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Why, why did Jesus, or why did John refuse at first to baptize Jesus? Okay, this has been a little bit of a controversy thing. Why? Okay, um, the, the, um, the question would be, let's reverse it around. Why did Jesus have to be baptized? Okay, what was the message? Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Okay? Now, what Jesus had nothing to repent of, right? He was sinless. Okay? He had no sin in him until he got on the cross and took our sin. So, but what happens here is, um, uh, like the leaders, Moses, Ezra, Daniel, they confess the sins of the nation. Even though it may not have been their own personal sin. Okay, Joshua was another one. Even though it wasn't their own personal sin, they still confessed the sins of a nation. Christ, 
being the Messiah of a nation as well as the world, identified with the sin of, the, of that nation. He knew that it was there, and he had to identify with the people. All right? Secondly, the people were looking for righteousness. The people were looking for the kingdom of heaven to come. John's been telling them, he, the kingdom of God is at hand. So in order for them to possibly recognize the kingdom of God is at hand, he's right here. Because it's very possible and very believable that a number of those people also, not just John the Baptist, witnessed the opening of heaven, the descending of the Holy Spirit, and the voice of heaven. And they would have recognized this is the kingdom of God at hand. Okay? S next, he had to submit to the authority of John. John was the voice of that day. Right? His father prophesied before him. John the Baptist was the voice of God now. So in order, as John had to submit to his father, Jesus submitted to John in order for his ministry to move forward. So these are the three, three aspects of why Jesus was baptized. John did not want to baptize him because he did not want to... He is a humble man. He did not want to see himself as one being over the Messiah. You know, I just come to pave the way. Well, in order for you to pave the way, you need to do this because this was the proclamation of the beginning of Christ's ministry. This is the first public announcement to the world that Jesus Christ's ministry was going to start. Okay? So this had to take place for righteousness to be fulfilled. So John uh, obviously submitted to it. Okay, um, then uh, is it? Yeah, back to John. John chapter one. Verse 35, and the next day after, this is now three days in a row, okay? Verse 35 of John 1, the next day after, John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, has said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And his two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned, saw them following, and said, What do you seek? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is interpreted, Master, where do you dwell? He said, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. So we know Andrew was one of the first followers of Christ in his public ministry. John the Baptist, at this point, preached for another few months. Actually, John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 22. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. Okay? Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples were baptizing. And John was also baptizing in Anion near Salim uh, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. John was not yet cast into prison. And there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that... Uh, was with thee beyond the Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, Jesus Christ. Behold, the same baptizes, and all men are coming to him. And John answered 
A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. You yourselves, uh, you yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He knew his ministry had come to an end. He must increase, but I must decrease. And it's very interesting the way it says it says this in the Greece. In, in the Greece. In the Greek. Well, obviously they say it in Greece, if it's in Greek, okay? The way it says it, verse 30, it's a, uh, he must is an is a active voice. He must continuously action. He must continuously increase. But I must. I must is in a passive voice. I must receive the results of his action. As I receive the results of his action increasing... The results are, I decrease. It's not like I do anything to decrease. His action causes me to decrease. His growth, his going forward, his proclamation, his message is causing me to decrease because he is the Messiah, the Christ, not me. Okay? So then we have, so this is his testimony here. We know that he preached. Uh, he preached for a few more months after this. Um, about one year after, about one year after the baptism of Christ, he was imprisoned. Matthew chapter eleven verses one through nineteen. He was imprisoned. The major point in which he was imprisoned for, who knows it? He, remember how he was talking to the individuals, give a coat away, give food away, stop stealing money, stop, um, stop the extortion, don't lie about people, don't cheat people. Oh yeah, and Herod, your adultery. You know, and he's like, he's, you know, he's dealing with people and he's like, oh wait, Herod, I'm sorry, how could I forget you? Just because you're the king of everybody. And just because you want to be everybody's friend and you build us this amazing temple that I've never been to, you have taken your brother's wife and you're living in adultery. And not only have you taken your brother's wife and live in adultery, you desire to have her daughter too. And this specific preaching... Now, Herod, Herod liked John. He loved to listen to him. He was intrigued by him. But all of a sudden, the conviction became personal. Like, hey, as long as you're talking about everybody else, it's fine, but leave my name out of it. So he imprisoned him. Once he imprisoned him, he used to, and now think about this. He imprisoned him in his own house. Here's a man with a voice that you can hear for seven miles. <laughs> And you don't like what he's saying. That's the last thing you want to do is put him in your house. Okay? So what happens now? Uh, the woman, <laughs> she gets a little bit ticked off. She's like, can you shut this man up? Do something? And he's like, I, you know, I, okay. he's from God. I can't touch him, you know? And she's like, I can. And she literally entraps Herod. And you know, you know the story. You know, okay, she entraps Herod. Okay, I'll give you up the half of my kingdom. Just let your daughter dance for me. Oh, okay, fine. I'll get what it, uh, what is it you want, by the way? Oh, John the Baptist's head on a platter. You thought the worms were bad. <laughs> I want his head. And he's like, no, anything but oh, and he was because now remember. All the people that were there at the party, he was afraid of being ashamed in front of people. So what did he do? He had John the Baptist beheaded. And so 
Now, all of a sudden, Jesus begins to get preaching and esteem. And you know what? You know what Herod says? This is John the Baptist come back from the dead. I, I'm being haunted by this man. Okay? So you have this is the idea here. Um, John, um, John, uh, one last thing before we close here. In Matthew chapter 11, John sent his disciples. Before he died, when he was in prison, he sent his disciples to Christ to ask them, Are you the Christ? Are you the Christ? John did not understand. He was looking like his father and like most other Jewish people, they were looking for a political Messiah as well as a spiritual Messiah. They thought both kingdoms would come at once. The kingdom of God delivering them from Rome. They did not understand the two advents. Jesus had to come as a servant, okay, before he could come as a king. They didn't understand the first advent and the second advent. They didn't understand that church age period in the middle. All right? Um, so before he had to come as a servant and a sacrifice before he could come as a king and a ruler. And what did Jesus say about John? There is, among all women, there is no greater man born. He is the greatest man that has ever been born. And what did he say, um, real quick, what did he say in Matthew chapter 11? Go show John the things you have seen and you have, uh, verse 4, Jesus answered to them, go and show John again the things you do hear and see that the blind receive their sight. John heard about what Jesus was doing. He didn't see the miracles. John didn't follow Jesus around. He didn't want to distract from his ministry at all. So he did not see the miracles. And when his disciples went back and comforted him that this is the Christ, this is the Messiah, he was more than willing to just go off the scene. But he knew that if this wasn't the Messiah, for some odd reason, if, if you're not the Messiah, then I need to get out of prison and keep preaching. God's going to deliver me. But if you are the Messiah, then I have no problem surrendering at this point to the will of God and dying. Okay? So he was, he was um, John's ministry lasted for about one and a half years. It started after he was 30 years old. He, John chapter 10, verse 41, he did no miracles. And he died by being beheaded. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put them together. They were completely different. John the Baptist had his own different type of ministry and calling. He was a very unique person in the fact that he came in the spirit of Elijah and he was a forerunner to, the, to Christ. He had his own ministry and he sent his disciples to follow Christ. He was not interested in building his own ministry or his own empire. He was completely about building Christ's ministry. What's the difference between... Oh, do we need that thing? I'm sorry. Hold on a minute. <laughs> I keep forgetting that. <laughs> What's the difference between um, when the um, priests were asking John if he was the Christ and he said no, and then he said, uh, they asked him if he was that prophet... You know, I mean, Christ was the Messiah. It seems like they were repeating the same question. Yeah. The, um, the, the priest did not recognize the fact that the prophet would be the Messiah. Because remember, 
up to that point, they had always had king priests. They had always had one political, one political leader and one religious leader up to that point. It always had, who was it? David was the king and the, uh, uh, Nathan was his prophet. Okay, there was always this thing going on. Ezra was unique. He was a, he was a pr uh, scribe priest. Okay, he was unique. Zerubbabel. Okay, they, some of these guys were unique, but they, they were used to two leaders. So the, the priests understood the Messiah as one and the prophet as an, the Messiah would be the king, the deliverer, the ruler. The prophet would be the one who would promote him or would re, uh, introduce him. So are you the prophet? No. Oh, then you must be the Messiah, the Christ. No. Oh, okay, then you're Elijah. No. Okay, we're out of options. Who are you? I'm the voice. Just call me the voice. So is that where John Baptist got the idea of, uh, is this Jesus the Messiah? or? Yeah, he started, he, putting, got... he started putting them together, the Messiah and the prophet. He started putting them together and because he had the concept that Jesus Christ was going to do both at the same time. He was going to be the prophet and the Messiah, delivering them from Rome so that they can set up their own kingdom. Okay. Was there another question? or One more, and then way in the back. It's, it's got to be on the mic, sorry. <laughs> So when the scripture says Elijah was here, but you've done what, what you want with him, why does that somehow lead you to believe that it could be talking maybe about John? I'm not following you. It, it's a scripture that said Elijah was here, but you've done what you want with him. You're not familiar with the scripture? No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You got to... Okay, I got a verse. I'll give it to you. We'll okay. read it, but... All right. Okay. I'll pass. All right. Father, thank you, God, again for tonight, for each one of these students. God, for Pastor Love, for this Bible college, Pastor Schaller. God, we pray that you would cover our night tonight. Bless it. Help us in our studies. God, our homework. God, give us the strength we need to be faithful Give us wisdom, God, to understand the things we're taught. Give us the grace we need, God, to be able to apply the things we've learned. God, give us the mercy we need to be able to get up when we fall. God, the courage, the ability to be able to minister and serve you in this day. God, we love you. We thank you. In Christ's name, amen.